Welcome back to Pound for Pound ATL. What's going on, football fans? It's time once again for another rendition of the Pound for Pound. I'm your host, J.R. Clark. And hey, we got a winner. We got the 3,000 subscribers. Holy crap, that is absolutely insane. So, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get put out the name there. It's Marwin Kabbalah. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, it's Marwin Kabbalah is our winner of our uh, grand prize. Um, if you could get in contact with us, Marwin, uh, either on Twitter at Grim1128, that's G-R-I-M-M-1128, or Toby D1991, that's one way, or you can email us at pound, P-O-U-N-D, the number four, P-O-U-N-D-A-T-L, at gmail.com. So either send us a message on Twitter or send us an email at poundforpoundatl.com and we would love to get your information so that we can send you your prize. Yeah, man, y'all got us to 3,000 subscribers and that is absolutely amazing. We appreciate it so much. Um, it, it's been just an absolute wild ride since the uh, draft um, and yeah, really since we came back strong last year and uh, we came back strong all because of y'all and because of y'all's interest in what we're doing. So, we really appreciate it, and without further further ado, I think we're just going to go ahead and jump on into it. My buddy uh, Toby D, my partner in crime, uh, my partner on this channel last week put out a video predicting uh, total sacks and sacks for the team, sacks for the players, and after doing a bunch of, of film breakdowns that we've been doing over the offseason, that seemed like almost a breath of fresh air. So, I thought about being a little cheap and piggybacking on his idea, but uh, I think I'm going to tackle the huh, I think I'm going to tackle the the turnovers for the team. Because every time I sat down to look at what was the catalyst for the turnaround from the first 8 weeks to the second 8 weeks, the biggest thing that popped out to me was turnovers. In the first 8 weeks you had like 3 or 4 turnovers. And in the second 8 weeks you had some somewhere in the neighborhood of like 10 to 15 turnovers. It was an amazing turnaround from first from the first half to the second half. Now, I contribute that solely to Raheem Morris and Jeff Ulbrich in the way they started to actually disguise coverages and things of that nature. The first half of the season, Dan Quinn was stubbornly sticking to that 5-2-4 look that he had, and it just wasn't fooling nobody, and they weren't generating any turnovers hardly at all so with that being said i'm really looking for this team to explode with the turnovers this season you're bringing in a guy like joe witt jr who that's part of his mantra is definitely is taking away the ball you know they, they did a real good job of that in cleveland with his time there and with green bay in his time there so i'm really interested to see like how these coaches like get that out of this team because I think that's something that can be uh, produced more on a, on a regular basis. In the first eight games, like I said, man, you have four turnovers. And in the second eight games, you had 16 turnovers for a total of 20. I think you're going to see that number go up in the, in this season, in the 2020 season. Um, from the linebacker group alone, you had seven turnovers. That right there was tied with the D-line. Uh, for four now when I'm talking about turnovers, I'm talking about fumbles. I'm talking about interceptions uh, Whether we recovered them or not, you know, you had seven turnover opportunities from the linebacker group alone Now that is a staple of a Tampa 2 style defense, which I think you're gonna see the Falcons run more of in 2020 with Raheem Morris at the helm. That's something I plan on diving into Maybe as we get closer to the camp or something like that. But uh, anywho, so from the linebacker group, you had seven turnovers. From the safety group, you had six turnovers. The corners had five turnovers. Like I said before, the D-line had seven turnovers. So not all these like translated to getting the ball back to the offense, but that's something that a key to you know winning games is stealing possessions. 
whether it's one or two possessions a game, if you can give the offense more opportunities to score, hey, guess what? You tend to have a better chance of winning. So, in the interception department, right, which is the one thing that we like to talk about quite a bit, uh, the team leave was Desmond Trufant, which I know all y'all are going to cringe when you hear that. Trufant had four interceptions last year. So it seems like the year they finally decided to move on from Trufant is when he finally didn't have as stone of hands as we like to uh, um, we like to charge him with, so to speak, uh, or we like to give him a hard time about having. I remember people wanting to give him a jugs machine, you know, and send it to his house. So, but he had four turnovers, so that's a lot that you're going to have to um, you're going to have to replace there between him and Devondre Campbell. You had six turnovers alone. So we're going to have to, you know, hopefully, you know, we can scheme up that, that production. Um, and, you know, you hope guys like Isaiah Oliver, you know, take a, another step forward under, under the tutelage of a Joe Witt Jr. Um, Ricardo Allen had two interceptions. DeMonte Casey had three. So you have five interceptions come from the, come from the safeties. So that's, um, uh, uh, hopefully with the use of this big nickel that I think you're going to see a lot more of, um, hopefully you keep those two guys on the field at the same time is kind of what I'm getting at. Uh, both those guys have real good instincts as far as uh, ball hawking and taking the ball away. All right, so <coughs> now, as I said before, you you lose Desmond Trufant, you're adding A.J. Terrell, or Terrell, and uh, you're also adding Deon Buchanan and Michael Walker in the place of Devondre Campbell. Now, Dale Buchanan is not much of a turnover machine. Uh, his best year was in 2015 with one interception, three forced fumbles, and two fumble recoveries. So I don't know if I really expect a ton out of uh, him as far as the turnovers go. Michael Walker in college wasn't necessarily a turnover machine, and I'll be interested to see how much he actually makes it on the field. I think he has a, a decent learning curve that he's going to have to uh, adjust to playing from a defensive end to more of just a linebacker. So I'm being interested to see how quickly he makes it onto the field for the Falcons. So let's just go ahead and do it. Let's just go ahead and get into the predictions of where I think that we're going to be at. All right. So first of all, I think Deion Jones gets back to form. I think he gets back to with, with Raheem Morris being at the helm now um, and calling a coverage that more suits a linebacker such as Deion Jones, I can easily see him getting back to uh, his Pro Bowl year with the three interceptions and the one forced fumble. So I'm giving him four turnovers just from him alone. And I, and I don't think that's much of a stretch. Like I said, I think with the, the way this coverage scheme works, I think it's going to benefit Deion Jones so much more. And he's going to get back to being even more comfortable I mean, you saw him end out the season last year with a pick six of um, Jameis Winston down there in Tampa in overtime. But we all love that gif of him uh, picking Drew Brees in the uh, end zone um, in that Thursday night game that we had with them a few years back. So needless to say, I don't think it's much of a stretch for Deion Jones to get back to form. All right, let's keep it on moving. Uh, Foye Aluakon. Um, I think... He's going to get more playing time, obviously. Uh, so I can see easily one interception for him and two forced fumbles. Uh, I think you're going to see him playing more of the, um, you know, Devondre Campbell type role or just, you know, more of the weak side linebacker. So it'll be interesting to see if, like, like how much he progresses moving forward and if Dayon Buchanan uh, surplants him. I mean, he is a former first round talent. So we'll see if, if he comes in and takes some snaps away for sure. But uh, like I said, I see Foyer having uh, one interception and two forced fumbles, which would be good production for him. Uh, his second year as a, you know, well, first year really as a full-time starter. Um, so it'd be great to see uh, what he can produce. Now, speaking of Dayon Buchanan, he's an interesting guy that they brought in. Uh, former first rounder pick out of Arizona. He's the one that kind of started this uh, small linebacker craze in a sense. I mean, the dude's barely 220 pounds soaking wet. I think he's actually listed at like 218 or something. So with that being said, uh, he's one of the first ones that, that 
got this undersized linebacker craze kicked off that that then Deion Jones kind of uh, took to another level. So with him being out on the field, I could easily see him pulling down maybe one interception and getting a fourth fumble or two. Um, he, I think he's going to be your blitzing linebacker, honestly. Uh, so I could see him getting more fourth fumbles than he does interceptions. So now, <clears throat> this leads me to the last guy on the um, linebacker roster, I guess you say linebacker group, and that's Michael Walker. As before, I said I don't think he's going to get a ton of playing time unless he just comes in and blows the coaches away. I think he's going to be sent on more blitzes than anything else. I think he's going to be playing more to the uh, closer to the line of scrimmage. So I think I would like to give him maybe two force fumbles. Um, now, force fumbles, obviously, you know, as we've talked about before, doesn't necessarily mean that it creates a turnover, but I think that he's going to be in the backfield and have some chances. And I like him for that. Now, Let's move on to the safety group. Now, safety group I think is going to be important this year because I do think that you're going to see a lot of big nickel. Uh, Toby D did a video, real good video on that. I suggest and encourage y'all to go check that one out. But uh, I think you're going to see a lot more big nickel this year because uh, I think they're going to want to get Ricardo, DeMonte, and Keanu all on the field at the same time. So, starting out with Ricardo Allen, the field, you know, the safety general. Uh, he did real well playing close to the line of scrimmage last year. I see them maybe doing more of that, more like cover two type stuff uh, with him and KZ. I see him coming away with uh, two interceptions and one forced fumble. So I think you get three turnovers from, from Ricardo, um, and which, would, which would be great. Uh, Keanu Neal. Now, he's the one that I'm real, real interested about. Because in his prime, in his, his like healthiest that he's been with us, he was a force fumble machine. Um, with that hard hitting that he does, uh, that head hunt almost, the enforcer, he, he brings that fear uh, across the middle uh, for those receivers. So I can definitely see him getting back up in there uh, in his Pro Bowl year. He had five force fumbles. So that's what I'm predicting this year is I'm predicting him to get completely back to form. Uh, I think he'll have five force fumbles and one interception. I believe that he'll be bringing that uh, that fire there in the middle, be bringing that heat, and uh, I can't wait to see it. Now, let's go on to uh, DeMonte KZ. Now, DeMonte KZ has been ball hawking since college. He has been ball hawking with us. It's just been trying to find a good place for him. Now, he definitely doesn't, some people accuse him necessarily not having the range to play a deep free safety. And I have to agree, he doesn't necessarily have the range or um, the Earl Thomas-esque instincts to be playing that deep safety all the time. But in a cover two where, you know, in a cover two type system where, you know, you got uh, him and Ricardo back there with Keanu playing closer to the line, I think that will give him the opportunity to take some more chances and be a risk taker and be and use those ball hawking instincts that I know he's got. I mean, he's proved it since he's been in the league. He proved it in college, and I think he continues to prove it. I think, honestly, this is where you're going to get your interception production from. I think he's going to have the most interceptions of the team. I think he's going to come away with four picks uh, and one forced fumble. I think that DeMonte Casey in 2020 is going to be a turnover machine. And, man, I can't wait to see it because the more opportunities we can give Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, and Todd Gurley and all them, the better. I honestly believe that was the sole reason for the for the 6-2 and two turnaround because if you look at some of the defensive numbers, they weren't that much different from the first half to the second half. The big difference was is was turnovers and you know giving the ball back to Matt Ryan and company. That was the big difference there. All right, let's move on. Keep this keep this train rolling. Keep this thing a trucking. We are going on to the uh, cornerback group. Now, this is an inexperienced group, so I'm not expecting a ton out of them. Um, I, I think that's another reason why you're going to see a lot more big nickel because that's where your experience is. That's where your coverage experience is at right now is in the safety group, not necessarily the, the um, cornerback group. Now, I have y'all have noticed that I've left off some what I consider to be reserve guys, uh, whether it's, 
you know, um, Neesman or in the linebacker group, if it was, you know, Leroy Reynolds or uh, whoever, uh, I'm not going, I mean, they could get a few here or there, but I'm going what I feel like are going to be the starters, right? So on the cornerback group, I don't have Bleedy Ray Wilson. It wouldn't surprise me if he come, come away with a pick or two, uh, depending on his play, but I think that your starting trio of cornerbacks is going to be A.J. Uh, Terrell, Isaiah Oliver, and Kendall Sheffield. So from A.J. Uh, Terrell, I have three picks from him. Uh, he did a pretty good job in college uh, from taking the ball away out there at Clemson. But the reason why I have three is because I think people are going to test him. And I think, they're going to, I think he's going to do a good job of making them pay. Now that's probably a little bit lofty. But, I mean, come on, he's a first-round talent. Uh, he, uh, so you got to expect lofty things from your first-round talent. So I got him pegged with three picks, uh, no four fumbles. Um, now, Isaiah Oliver, it's going to be a make-or-break year for Oliver. I mean, we're going into, what, his third, third season? Oh, I'm probably wrong on that one. But anyway, I know we're going into his second season, full season as a starter, or at least presumed starter. And so there's a lot of pressure on him. So I'm expecting him, and I'm going to try to be positive. I'm going to say that he, you know, rises to the occasion. I, I think that he takes the, the coaching from Joe Witt Jr. real well. And so I think he comes away with two interceptions. No force fumbles, but I don't expect much, many force fumbles from uh, my cornerback group. Unless, unless, you're my next guy, which is Kendall Sheffield. Uh, Kendall Sheffield, I think, you know, he... You, possibly playing him more of a, a slot corner it's all up in the air really just depends on how uh, Isaiah Oliver shows up uh, like he could get relegated to slot duty depending on his play obviously so Kendall Sheffield I don't have him with any uh, turnovers but I do have him with two forced fumbles uh, he had a forced fumble last year so um, I, I think that that's something that he can bring more to the table now for the last group, the last group is the defensive line. Now, obviously, I don't think there's going to be much of much interceptions, probably none, but we could be getting some forced fumbles there. You know, we could get some turnovers uh, caused by the defensive line. Uh, I only picked out three guys because it's going to be a heavy defensive line rotation, so I wasn't necessarily trying to go through the entire roster. So they could come from anywhere, but the consistent three defensive linemen that I could see would be uh, Grady Jarrett, Tack McKinley, and Dante Fowler Jr. So out of those three guys, I think Grady Jarrett comes away with two forced fumbles. I mean, he's always getting into the backfield with those you know, tackles for losses and um, things of that nature. So I easily see him coming away with two forced fumbles because um, he's a very disruptive player. Uh, Tack McKinley, he's going to be battling Charles Harris. Uh, <laughs> for some playing time, I think, uh, depending on how he comes back with that shoulder. But I'm going to go ahead and give him one force fumble. And our boy Dante Fowler, he is so hyped to be back with under Dan Quinn and so hyped to be in Atlanta, close to where he played college football at. Uh, I give him two force fumbles. And those, I think, are going to come in forms of strip sacks. That's what I think there. So grand total... I think we're going to come away with 15 interceptions from our core starting group and 19 four fumbles from our core starting group. Now, we could always get more from reserve players, uh, people coming in and, and things of that nature, but I really think that that's going to be a major catalyst for this team. I think the turnovers are going to be what you know propels this defense into the top 10. I think that they're going to be an opportunistic defense. I think that that's what pushed us to the Super Bowl in 2016. If you go back and look at that year, like the defense didn't, we weren't stopping nobody in the first half of the season. I mean, the only reason why we were winning games is because we were able to out boat race people. So, but in the second half of the season, that's when these guys started turning that ball over and giving the offense, you know, more chances to succeed. And I think that that's what it's going to take. I think that we, we get this turnover train, man. That things like that are contagious, right? One guy starts getting a, you know, start getting picks, other guys start getting picks. One guy starts getting, you know, punching the ball out, other guys start punching the ball out. So I think that this is something that 
Raheem Morris and Joe Witt Jr. and Jeff Ulbrich and all those guys are really going to be pushing, and I think that they're going to have a, a real positive effect on the team. Now, another thing that's a positive effect on the team, check out this jersey, man. What? Finally got my jersey in. I think it's awesome. It looks so much better in person. Um, I'm so glad, you know, to have it in or whatever. It was almost, what, two months or so. But either way, it's cool. It's in. I know y'all probably noticed it, but I think they look awesome. Um, well, that's all I got for y'all. Uh, and as always, Falcons fans, you can follow us on Twitter. I'm at Grim1128. That's G-R-I-M-M-1128. Toby D is at Toby D1991. Uh, you can email us if you want to at pound for pound ATL, and that's spelled out, but with the number four instead. So pound, the number four, pound ATL at gmail.com. You can send us an email. And like I said at the top of the video, uh, I'm going to give our winner, uh, Marwin Cabal, one week to contact us either Twitter or email and uh, so we can set up sending you your prize. If we don't hear from you by the time the next video comes out, we'll just move on to the next person. No big deal. No hard feelings. But we appreciate y'all helping us get to 3,000. And we hope that we just can keep on pushing and make it to 4,000. That would be cool, right? Anyway, as always, Falcons fans, rise up.